first I want to, to thank Thermo Fisher to organize this symposium. And so my talk will be on the community infections in the emergency department and how we can improve on the accuracy and the delay for the diagnosis of community infection. So this is my conflict of interest. So we will talk about uh, infection. So fever, of course, will uh, prove infection, but I prefer to talk about sepsis suspicion uh, because, as you know, in emergency room, fever is only 2 to 3% of our emergency department patients. But, of course, we are seeing many other septic patients and there is many other modes of presentation of septic patients, um, notably in the elderly patients, and we have some clinical presentations like weakness and like confusion that could mimic uh, septic states. So it could, not, it could be not so easy to diagnose sepsis in uh, the emergency room. So sometimes the diagnosis is obvious and we don't need any biomarker, we don't need any uh, biological exam to diagnose, for example, this uh, pulmonary infection or this cellulitis. And this is particularly true when you have a direct smear proving the bacterial origin of uh, the infection. But as you know, the real life is quite different and we have to deal with very difficult to interpret uh, complementary exams, particularly chest X-ray. And this is particularly true when your emergency department looks like this with many patients in the waiting line and you can be sure that in this waiting line you probably have septic patient and you have to diagnose this patient. So to help the emergency physician, of course we have SIRS criteria. Six SIRS criteria are very helpful but do not summarize all septic patients. Just as a proof uh, to show you this uh, publication, it was on 3,500 emergency department patients with suspected infection. And the authors uh, focused on the 289 patients uh, who had positive blood culture, so patients with proven bacterial infection. And as you can see, there was 30% of these patients with infection uh, we, who had normal temperature and 50% who had normal white blood cell count. So don't wait for SIRS criteria to think about sepsis. Um, of course, it is uh, very helpful and interesting, but uh, you have to think about sepsis in other situations. So this is uh, one illustration on uh, how we go to the septic diagnosis in our current practice. Just imagine that uh, each fish represents a septic patient you have to catch. Usually, with a medical history, with a clinical examination, you will catch the biggest ones, patients with very obvious infection. Despite this, you will have some fishes uh, which will go through your net and probably you will catch uh, middle fishes with usual biological parameters, for example, or direct smear of urine, for example. But despite this, you will still have some little fishes going through your net. Um, this is the patients who are very interesting to, uh, to study. Um, to my knowledge, this is a place for biomarkers of infection to identify very difficult patients with infection. So which biomarkers uh, of sepsis? Uh, my talk will be essentially on procalcitonin because, uh, as you know, there is a lot of randomized controlled studies, uh, notably in low respiratory tract infections, demonstrating the positive effect of PCT measurement on the rational use of antibiotics. Uh, PCT is also uh, very useful to 
uh, identify the etiology of fever, inflammatory where PCT is normal versus bacterial where PCT is elevated. And PCT may be also useful for the severity assessment of your patient together with lactate. We will talk about this uh, in a few minutes. What about CRP? Just a few words on C-reactive protein. As you know, it is a biomarker of inflammation, not a biomarker of infection. And when you look at the literature, there is no clearly defined threshold of CRP for sepsis diagnosis, and there is no really well-conducted interventional studies proving the added value of CRP. Uh, we will talk a little bit on lactate for severity assessment because it's also a very useful biomarker in the emergency room for sepsis evaluation. So PCT for sepsis diagnosis. This is a kinetic of uh, the biomarker. This is an uh, exper experimental study on healthy volunteers. Uh, the challenge was, was uh, on dotoxin injection, and um, as you see, after the peak of uh, cytokine like interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha, uh, PCT is the first biomarker uh, rising in the blood of the patient uh, just before, and a few hours before CRP. So PCT is an earlier biomarker uh, during sepsis. In 2007, we uh, published a study on uh, February patients attending the emergency department, and uh, we uh, reported that PCT was uh, the best biomarker uh, to identify the bacterial origin of infection in uh, the February patients. Uh, as you know, the emergency physician diagnosis evaluation was a very good predictor of the bacterial origin of the uh, of the fever, but after that, PCT was more useful than uh, the white blood cell count and more useful than CRP. Uh, when we look at the uh, diagnosis of severe sepsis tet, uh, in this study on uh, 500 emergen emergency department patients with a suspicion of infection, uh, you can see that Again, PCT was uh, better than interleukin-6 on CRP uh, to diagnose severe sepsis among this group of patients suspected of infection. What about PCT uh, usefulness for uh, antibi antibiotic prescription? So you probably heard about the World Health Organization's claim about that, uh, the world is headed for a post-antibiotic era in which common infections and minor injuries which have been treatable for decades can once again kill. So the question is, do we have a rational use of antibiotic? Uh, you know the answer, the answer is no. Just uh, to show you, for example, in the United States, uh, it was a, a letter published in the JAMA uh, a few months ago about the antibiotic prescription rate in adults with acute bronchitis. As you know, antibiotics are not indicated in usual bronchitis. And you can see that from the 19th uh, years to uh, 2010 uh, year, the rate of antibiotic prescription is quite the same Mm, it is slightly increasing. Also, we know that we don't have to give antibiotics for uh, bronchitis. So it is obvious that we don't use antibiotics uh, in a useful manner. So you probably have already seen this publication. It was the first interventional studies on uh, the antibiotic stewardship using a PCT algorithm. Uh, it was uh, the group of Beat Muller which uh, would publish this study on patients attending the emergency department with a suspicion of low respiratory tract infection. 
And you can see that in the PCT group, uh, in the black bar, uh, when you use a PCT to help you to decide if you give or not antibiotics with a threshold of 0.25, uh, it was able to reduce significantly the amount of patients receiving antibiotics. After this study, the same group on other published uh, other uh, interventional study uh, concerning the duration of treatment of uh, community acquired pneumonia in uh, general uh, practitioner medicine on all these studies had the same conclusion that it was uh, the PCT usefulness to reduce the exposition to antibiotics. So in this uh, meta-analysis publish published in Infection in 2009, you can see that in terms of antibiotic initiation or in terms of antibiotic duration, all these studies are in favor to the useful, to the use of PCT algorithm to help the physician to uh, prescribe or not antibiotics, uh, particularly in the context of low respiratory tract infection. What about a PCT for the severity assessment and the risk stratification of patients with uh, sepsis? As you know, we already have a good biomarker, namely uh, lactate. Lactate is a very good biomarker of severity as soon as sepsis is diagnosed. Lactate is not a sepsis biomarker, but a severity assessment biomarker. And lactate is uh, also interesting in patients with a normal blood pressure. And this is interesting, of course, because when you have a patient with a low blood pressure, you know that the patient has a shock and you don't need any other biomarker to diagnose him. But you can see that in patients with normal blood pressure, if you have an increasing lactate level, patient is at higher risk uh, to, uh, to belong to the severe outcome group. In our uh, cohort of family patients, we also uh, reported that PCT was a good uh, severity assessment biomarker. And as you can see, when you, you are attending our emergency department with fever and you have a PCT uh, below 0.2, you have 12% risk to be admitted to ICU or to death. You are the same patient with a PCT above 5 microgram per liter, you have 54% risk to be ICU admitted or to death. So a very interesting uh, severity, uh, severity information given by a PCT measurement. Um, this has also, also been, been proven or reported by another group, the CRIF, uh, which prove, who proved that a PCT uh, was uh, able to uh, indicate the uh, necessity for ICU admission. And this was not true for CRP. Again, PCT was uh, greater uh, than CRP for the severity assessment of the patient. Of course, you can combine both biomarkers, lactate and PCT. And in this study, we, uh, we reported the, useful, the respective usefulness of lactate and PCT for the diagnosis and the severity assessment of the patient. And again, like the study on blood pressure on lactate, sorry, when you have a PCT rising, you are at higher risk to, be, uh, uh, to belong to the severity group. You have lactate rising, you also have a higher risk to belong to the severity group. But you have both PCT and lactate elevated you are very at risk uh, to belong to the severity group. So both biomarkers are complementary and they don't give the same information. Lactate will give you information about uh, hemodynamics of your patient and PCT will provide you a more global severity assessment of your patient. Uh, 
So the next question is uh, what would be the diagnostic added value of a point of care sepsis biomarker? Again, in the emergency department, you know that the working conditions on particularly crowding uh, make it necessary to provide to the emergency physician reliable biomarkers to accurately and quickly rule in, but also rule out, uh, sepsis diagnosis. But point of care only, uh, only reduce, reducing the time from the blood sample to the result is not sufficient to uh, have an added value. On the point of care testing, not only should reduce the essay turnaround time, but would also reduce the vent to brain time. It is a time from the blood collection to the action on the results, but more importantly, the brain to brain time, that is the therapeutic turnaround time from the decision to order the test to the resulting clinical action based on the results. So, what is the situation now when you have a sepsis suspicion? You have the triage nurse, uh, we, we, we will triage your patient, then the patient go to the examination box, see the emergency physician, the physician is uh, thinking about sepsis, he will order uh, the biomarker, uh, the biomarker will be sent to the laboratory, and then we have to wait the result, and as soon as the result is available, the patient will perform what we call the brain 2, and make his decision about the patient. Of care measurement of PCT, we can uh, expect that the brain 1 will be as soon as the, the emergency physician will see the patient, and the brain 2 will be immediately after that, because the result of the test will be available just at the end of the clinical examination. So to finish, I just want to uh, present to you the feedback on the PCT Direct clinical performance uh, evaluation. Uh, you can see the poster uh, 301. We will have more details about uh, the study. And you can go to the Thermo Fisher booth to see uh, the PCT reader that we test during uh, this study. So it was uh, an European multicenter study on about 300 patients in emergency uh, department. Uh, and just to show you the correlation between the venous blood uh, measurement uh, with PCT direct uh, and the capillary measurement of PCT direct against the reference method uh, sent to the laboratory. As you can see, the correlation was uh, very good between the reference method and the PCT direct measurement. And in terms of sensitivity, at the point 25 cutoff that we use uh, every day, uh, you can see that the sensitivity was 88% uh, and the specificity was 97% with 93% uh, concordance between both tests. But the more important result was the time to result, point of care versus central lab. And you can see that the mean time to lab result was around two hours. And with the PCT rate, the mean time was 25 minutes. So it was a very great reduction in the time to result, uh, very useful for, uh, to get the information in the emergency department. Just to finish, I want to present you a practical and clinical case report. We received a 66-year-old man. He had multiple cardiovascular risk factors, and notably diabetes, ischemic cardiomyopathy, smoking and obesity and he had a chronic uh, renal failure. This patient was on a diuretic, beta blocker, aspirin, and more importantly, an anticoagulant therapy. Uh, 
Uh, this patient had a past emergency department admission uh, two weeks before for urinary tract infection and he was sent home with antibiotic. He was admitted again to our emergency department on the 6th of April for a truck state and a back pain. So he had a blood pressure, very low blood pressure, and he was a pyretic. And we have many questions about the etiology of the truck of this patient with a back pain. And because of the anticoagulant uh, therapy, we thought about anticoagulant overdose with, for example, a psoas or intra-abdominal hematoma. In this case, the diagnosis process would have been a CT scan with contrast injection, but the contrast injection was at very high risk because of the renal failure of, on the stroke of the patient. Another diagnosis hypothesis could be an abdominal aortic aneurysm rupture, and again, the diagnosis process in this case would have been a CT scan with contrast injection. And the last hypothesis could be an obstructive, an obstructive urosepsis because of the past urinary tract infection two weeks before. So we ordered CT scan, but we were waiting for the creatinine measurement for the contrast injection or not. And at the same time, we perform the PCT direct on a finger prick on arrival, and we get the result 20 minutes later, and the result was 5 micrograms per liter. So we were sure that the etiology of the truck was a septic one. So we order a CT scan without contrast, and the CT scan identified uh, hydronephrosis, and patient uh, will, uh, will, be, will perform, will have a fluid resuscitation uh, along with antibiotics, and he gets urinary derivation, and he was admitted to ICU for a septic shock secondary to obstructive pyelonephritis. So to conclude, uh, procalcitonin in the emergency room uh, may allow an improvement in the diagnosis accuracy of community infection. This is clearly proven for low respiratory tract infection with many interventional studies. Uh, it is useful for antibiotic rational use. It is also interesting for the risk stratification of your patients uh, along with lactate measurement. And with a point of care solution for measurement, uh, it will be interesting to shorten the time to result and therefore to shorten the time from blood sampling to the action on your patient. Thank you for your attention. First of all,